Hello, my name is Akiva Kleinerman, and today I'll be presenting my work on uh, providing uh, explanations for recommendations in reciprocal environments. Two years ago, I signed up to an online dating site, and um, suddenly I get a recommendation from the site saying, here is your perfect heavenly match. And I look at it and I say to myself, hmm, I don't know, doesn't look uh, exactly uh, what I wanted. And then I started thinking about it, and I thought maybe the system believes that she will be interested in me. And maybe that was the main cause of this uh, recommendation. And so thinking about this, I went over to my supervisor, Professor Krauss, and this is what led me to the research I'll be presenting today. So uh, I didn't find my match in this online dating site, but at least it led me to this research. Okay, so uh, reciprocal recommender systems are a type of recommender systems which recommend people to people, unlike other recommender systems which recommend item to, items to people. Potential applications for reciprocal recommender systems are on the online dating service, services, job recruiting platforms, roommate matching, and many more possible applications. Now, uh, the quality of a recommendation and a reciprocal recommender system depends on two decision makers, both the recommendation receiver, which I will call from now on the service user, and the recommended user. In order for the recommendation to be successful, both parties need to want to, would want to accept this recommendation in order to form the match. So, in order for a reciprocal recommendation system to increase the number of successful recommendations, it must, must contemplate the interests of both sides. And uh, this has been shown in the research. Um, so, going back to explanations, explanations in general recommendation systems um, will have been, become very popular, and usually these explanations focus on the service user's preferences, explaining why he presumably would be interested in the recommendation. Um, these explanations have been shown to achieve several goals, such as, such as accept, uh, increasing the acceptance of the recommendations and trust of users in the system. And these are the explanations come in many forms and styles. However, to the best of our knowledge, explanations for reciprocal recommender systems have not been investigated yet. And specifically, in reciprocal re recommender systems, a very important part of the explanation could be explaining why the recommendation, the recommended user will be interested in the service user. And the question we ask is how would this contribute to the explanation, to the effect of the explanation? So we, uh, in our work we present a new form of explanation which we call a reciprocal explanation. Reciprocal explanation provides reasoning for the interest of both sides of ex explanation. Like for example, you will like her because she's an artist and she will like you because you, are, um, you, are, you like hiking. I don't know, whatever. But, um, and, and we compare our reciprocal explanations to traditional explanations uh, which focus on the service user's interest and we call them one-sided explanations. And our goal in this work is to compare their effect. So in order to compare the effect of both kinds of explanation styles, we performed a sequence of three experiments. Two of these experiments were in a simulated online dating site which we built specifically for this purpose. Um, the sec uh, third, uh, third experiment was an operational online dating service which I'll talk about later. Uh, the reason we decided to use both environments is because each one of these environments has their own unique benefits. The simulated online dating site we allowed us to have more freedom and we were able to collect more detailed user feedback uh, about their uh, user experience. And the uh, operational online dating site, naturally the results there reflect the real world impact more accurately. So first I'll talk a bit about um, the simulated online dating site which we built. Uh, we called it Matchmaker and Matchmaker included features which are common in online dating sites such as creating profiles, interacting with other users by messages and uh, receiving system recommendations. Uh, we the, the participants were uh, students from Bar-Ilan University. We divided them into two conditions. One group received recommendations with one-sided explanations, traditional explanations, and the other, other group received recommendations with reciprocal explanations. Uh, now, the participants entered the system uh, from their home, and uh, it was a web application, and they uh, they created profiles, interacted with other users, and later received recommendations with they, which they decided if to, if to accept or not. And later after that, they, they filled in a user uh, experience questionnaire, debriefing them about different questions such as uh, their satisfaction in the system and trust in the system. 
So here is just a snapshot from our system. As you can see here, the, rec the system uh, recommends Alice to the participant. And, this is, and it has a reciprocal explanation because it also includes reasoning for why Alice would be interested in the participant. Um, a problem we encountered whenever we built a matchmaker is that it's very hard to simulate uh, a very important factor in acceptance of recommendation. A very important factor in acceptance of rec recommendation is the cost and gain involved in accepting a recommendation. And when you're simulating online dating site, it's very hard to, uh, to model this. So um, in a reciprocal recommendation site, their emotional cost is common and very prominent. And for some users, emotional cost mainly due to the fear of rejection, mainly due to accepting the recommendation, sending a message, and being rejected by the other side. But um, this uh, is also common in other, not only online dating sites, but also in other reciprocal recommendation, recommendation systems like in uh, job recruiting platforms. So whenever we, when we built the matchmaker, we wanted to somehow simulate uh, this emotional cost, so we decided to create two different settings. In the first setting, uh, we, because the, this emotional cost the, 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 is very different among different users, we, def we decided to make one setting with negligible cost. In that, co in that setting, users, users weren't required for any uh, significant cost when accepting recommendations. Second, second uh, setting we called explicit cost. In this setting, we imposed a monetary cost which aimed to simulate the emotional costs involved in accepting recommendation, and it was also gain, also gain and cost uh, available. So uh, the results we received in the two different settings were very different, were opposites. In uh, the negligible cost setting, we found actually that the one-sided explanations outperformed the reciprocal explanations. And in the explicit cost setting, in most measures we measured, an explicit cost setting, we found that the reciprocal explanations were superior both in acceptance of the recommendations and also in the trust of the users in the system. So the, the reciprocal explanations performed better when there was cost involved in accepting the recommendation. After finishing the uh, experiments in the simulated online dating site, we continued to, and uh, contacted an uh, operational online dating app called Duv Devon. It is relatively new. Israeli online dating app. Uh, actually, the owner is the same owner of the site that I signed into. Uh, so um, uh, the participants were active users from the site, and they did not know that they were uh, part of the experiment. We divided them uh, randomly into two groups. One received uh, recommendations with uh, one-side explanations. The other one received recommendations with uh, reciprocal explanations. They received five rec uh, recommendation, recommendations in five consecutive days. And the main measure here was acceptance, because um, there is no questionnaire as, as part of the mobile app. So what we mainly measured here was the acceptance. So the results we received in uh, the operational online dating site showed that in the whole population, the reciprocal explanations outperformed the one-side explanations, meaning the users who got reciprocal explanations accepted a lot more than the users who uh, received one-side explanations. Later, we divided the users into female, uh, female users and male users, and we saw, that, we saw that in the female users, the difference was significant, means, meaning female users who received uh, reciprocal explanations significantly accepted more than uh, ones who received one-side explanations, while for male users, the difference was, the difference was not significant. We believe that this is because that uh, it's pos a possible explanation is that it may be that for female users, the emotional cost involved in sending an uh, initial message is more prominent. Uh, later, we divided the users into according to frequency of sending messages, and we saw that in the inf users who infrequently, infrequently send messages, the uh, acceptance was, uh, of reciprocal explanations was a lot higher, uh, was significantly higher than uh, one-side explanations. And in the frequently senders, the difference was minor. So in conclusion, uh, in our work, we introduced a new form of explanation, which we, uh, we called reciprocal explanations. And we see, what we saw is that when this cost is significant, when cost is significant in accepting the recommendation, uh, reciprocal explanations outperform the one-sided explanations. And we believe that this is because that the reciprocal explanations increases the confidence of the users in positive outcomes of accepting the recommendation and sending a message, and therefore they're willing to take the risk. On the other hand, we found that when the cost is negligible, there's no real significant cost involved in accepting the recommendation, we saw that one-sided explanations were actually superior, and we believe that this is because that 
whenever there's no cost involved, whenever you don't care if the other side will accept or not, so you don't, this, this information is unnecessary and maybe even causes information overload and that's why it's undesired. Uh, that's it, thank you for listening, questions. Questions from the audience? Yeah. Um, thanks for the interesting study. I have a question about um, when you are giving a reciprocal uh, explanation, I think there is one thing more than just like an explanation. It's, it's a human that's getting feedback on who she is or who he is. Did you ever try to like kind of differentiate between just a general feedback versus like a more personal feedback, or just uh, this whole, I think there could be a lot of mechanism behind this explanation. Giving someone just very neutral sentence, did you try to actually do that control condition? Well, of course, the uh, explanations here were very basic. We first, we, we started off with a few uh, experiments which tried to find the best explanation for this domain, but I agree that we could uh, find more sophisticated explanations and personalized. Um, and we will do that in future work. Our main uh, goal in this, in this work was just to compare one-side explanations with reciprocal explanations without focusing too much on the explanation style. But it's independent to the explanation style. The, what I, what I, just want to try. I see, so the reciprocal, so the explanation that they were given about themselves was on what level, I saw one of the examples that it was actually personal. So what was exactly the explanation? Um, well, the explanation in, uh, in, in the matchmaker's uh, environment was saying, explaining which preferences, which preferences of the user would, prob would probably fit the attributes of the recommended user and symmetrically the other side. So like for example, if the system uh, understood, but derived that the user is interested in uh, women who have PhDs, so it would will, it will, uh, mention that as part of the explanation. Okay, then, that, that, was the, that was what we tried. We, we, we tried different explanations. We also tried um, a diff, like collaborative filtering exp explanations, which uh, are based on similarity between users. But we found this to be more effective, the feature-based uh, explanations. I'll just add here, I know these sessions are really short, so I would encourage all the speakers that are talking now will be giving poster presentations as well. Please come and talk to them. Yeah, and I saw Robin had a question. Can I also? Um, I've sat down. If people could also introduce themselves when they ask questions, because I know we're a big group and it's just nice to know who people are. I'm a from Spotify. Hi, uh, Robin Burke, DePaul University. Um, so your, um, your live study actually seems like it left out the thing that I want to know most, which is when somebody was encouraged by your explanation to you know, potentially incur that emotional risk and, and send the, the message, did they in fact get more answers than uh, the people who weren't you know, getting that extra information about whether somebody was you know, appealing to them or not? That actually wasn't part of our interest because what we wanted to know is how the, what is the effect on the user who accepts the organization. The other side, does not know if the explanation he got, if the other side does not know that the other side got a recommendation at all, and does not know, of course, what kind of explanation he got. So therefore, we didn't focus on the, on the. Um, I understand. The, the issue is the outcome for the user is not just whether I clicked or not, right? It's whether they did in fact respond to me. The right? outcome is if the user accepted the recommendation by sending a message. And then, if they if they don't respond to the, me, the the respond yeah. is already is not. Uh, it doesn't have to do with the explanation style. That's a, that's the way we view it. Except that their their tendency to to actually act is being influenced by the explanation. No, they don't, they have no idea about the explanation. The other side, well, I'm talking. Well, that's what your results showed, right? That they were no, more likely if they got the, that there, explanation. There's two users. To act there's a service it. user who receives the recommendation with the explanation, and that's what we were we're looking at: the acceptance of those users. The other side who what happened later was not relevant for a study because they didn't get any, any, any recommendation or explanation at all. So if they, if they uh, replied or not, did it not matter for us? I see. Okay. Thanks. I just have a last question. So make it a quick one yeah. and a yeah, quick I'll answer, make please. make it a quick one. So the cost may be asymmetric. The cost may be asymmetric, means one side 
it may be less costly than the other site. For example, if you have a recruiter and uh, um, uh, who is recruited, for the recruiter, the cost may be more, for the recruiting, the cost may be less. The cost is, ver is very much dependent on domain and users, and therefore we, uh, we plan for future work to uh, explore more domains, and definitely the uh, cost is something we, we need to, uh, we want, would like to model, um, we would like to find wise ways to model. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you for a very engaging talk.